Good evening, team, and thanks for joining us for Coin 6 News at 11. I'm Elizabeth Din. Jeff Gianola has the night off. Tonight, major progress in the fight to house those in need, with the Metro saying a new program found new homes for more than 1,500 people living on the streets, but far more still needs to be done. Joelle Jones is going beyond the headlines tonight, and in light of that report, Joelle, I know you're hearing from one man who says camps in his neighborhood have him fearing for his family's safety. That's right, Liz. That man tells me he and his family have only lived here for four months, but already his wife wants them to move back out of Portland. He tells us in their short time here, both their car and home have been vandalized, and their street, the street that they live on has been the place of three fires, all due to the homeless camps. It's kind of disappointing. You know, I worked hard to get where I'm at and to move my family 36 hours and deal with this like now. Four months ago, Demetrius Bright says he and his family packed up everything to come to Portland. Bright, who was offered a job with the Timbers, says he and his wife were hoping for a safer life here, free from the rampant gun violence they experienced in Ohio, but tells us a constant string of issues with the homeless camps in his neighborhood have his family feeling even less safe. In bad neighborhood, you worry about gunshots and gun violence, and that's one reason we moved. We get away from stuff like that and to feel safe walking to school and move to a nice neighborhood, but it's like there's people doing narcotics sitting outside. We can't let our kids go outside and play on the front porch, let alone walk to school. Since moving to the South Tabor neighborhood in May, Bright says both his car and home have been vandalized, and there have been three fires on his street, the most recent happening just last night. Bright tells us issues with the homeless have gotten so bad, his wife now wants to take their children and move back to Ohio. Bright's dilemma with the homeless comes as Metro released data today outlining the progress made through their supportive housing fund. Backed by the Tri-County Homeless Services Tax on High Income Earners and Big Business, the fund, which was approved by voters in May of 2020, aims to address the homeless crisis through expanding services. According to the data released today, in the year following the program's start, the Metro Supportive Housing Fund has helped more than 1,600 homeless move into stabilized housing, protected roughly 9,200 people from being evicted, and generated more than 500 new shelter beds. With this progress, I asked the county why families like the Brights still feel like this crisis is impacting their safety. This is a huge amount of folks into housing and if we can't keep up with the number of folks who fall into homelessness, we're going to just tread water. That's how you can see these big numbers and still feel like there's a crisis on our streets because we haven't shut off the spigot. We've only made a bigger bucket to help people. But despite the encouraging numbers, Bright says as a new resident, he feels the city is not yet doing enough. Nobody does anything about any here, anything here. Like when my car got vandalized, my house got vandalized, the police officer said, welcome to Portland. Now, it's important to know that that progress outlined in the report just shows the progress from one year of this Metro fund. This is supposed to be a 10 year ongoing progress, so it will be interesting to see how this develops now that the fund is more established. We're told we're supposed to get more data and updates in the months to come. Reporting live in downtown Portland, I'm Joelle Jones, Coin 6 News. Yeah.